All right, this is fifth grade, module four, lesson 15, and we're going to learn how to multiply non-unit fractions by other non-unit fractions. So we're talking like two-thirds times uh, four-fifths, that kind of a thing. So let's get started. So uh, we could teach a rule, just a straight rule um, to our students, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to teach the meaning behind it and let the students figure out the rule, or we're going to slowly guide them towards the rule, because they will indeed learn that standard algorithm. Uh, so we're going to use um, a rectangle model in order to explain our thinking, because that's what we've been doing in the previous videos. So I'm going to draw one hole, and I'm going to begin by drawing three-fourths. Alright, and so let's get our three-fourths going here. So here's my three-fourths, and now we're supposed to find, find two-thirds of three-fourths. So just like we've been doing in previous videos, we would draw horizontally thirds. So here's our thirds. And then we want two-thirds uh, of the three-fourths. So that makes this much right here is our two-thirds of our three-fourths. So that means we've got one, two, three, four, five, six units, six little fractional units out of a total of 12 fractional units because we can see that there's three going up and down, there's four going across, so there's 12 total. And then we can use our simplifying. We can divide both the numerator and the denominator by six and that tells us that that equals one-half. And so two-thirds of three-fourths is one-half. And So mathematically, the way we would show that is we would say two-thirds, let's get that going here, two-thirds times three-fourths is equal to six-twelfths, which is equal to one-half. And that is how we would make it you know, like write it down using kind of what would look like standard form. So let's practice another one here. So we've got four-fifths of three-fourths. And so once again, we're going to draw our hole right here. And then we're going to cut it into fourths because it says three-fourths. All right, and now we're going to shade in three-fourths. All right, so now that we've got three-fourths shaded in, now we're going to do four-fifths of three-fourths. So that means we are going to cut horizontally into five pieces, fifths, and we want four-fifths. So here's our three-fourths. And we want five um, four fifths of that. So four fifths would represent all this piece right here. All right. So how many pieces do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's actually pretty easy because we have three going uh, left and right, and then we have. 4 going up and down, so that's 12. So we have 12 little fractions that were um, our 4 fifths of 3 fourths out of a total. Now we have to count the total number of pieces. So we have 5 going up and down, we have 4 going left and right, so that's 20 total. And then of course we can see that that can reduce or be simplified, and we can see that the numerator and the denominator can both be divided by 4. And so our simplified answer would be 3 fifths. So the answer is 3 fifths. And the way we would write that more appropriately, we'd say, all right, 4 fifths times 3 fourths is equal to 12 twentieths, which is equal to 3 fifths. So by now, student, we want students to see that, hmm, when we do four-fifths times three-fourths, 
That's really doing 4 times 3 for the numerator and 5 times 4 for the denominator, and that is where we get the 20, uh, 12 twentieths that is then simplified to 3 fifths. So it's this key point right here that's so important that really, to get our answer, we're going to take the numerators and multiply them together, and we're going to take the denominators and multiply them together, and that's how we get 12 twentieths. Now here's a kind of a cool thing that we also want students to see, that they have an option, that they, they could, so let's take this 4 fifths times 3 fourths, and because multiplication is commutative, we can change the order of these. That really, if we wanted to, we can see that here's a 4 and here's a 4. And I could reorder them to be 3 times 4 over 5 times 4. And that students can see that 4 over 4 is a fraction that could be reduced. 4 over 4 simplifies to one whole, or 1 over 1. So I'm going to change that to a 1 over a 1. 4 over 4, I'm going to write that over here. 4 over 4 is equal to 1 over 1. All right, now teachers, parents, you're going to have to take a while and explain, help your students see that, oh, if we can divide both the numerator, numerator and the denominator by 4, we get 1 over 1. So that means 4 over 4 is equivalent to 1 over 1. They're equal to each other. So when I go over here and I rewrite these 4's to be on top of each other, I get 3 over 5 times 1 over 1, or 3 times 1 over 5 times 1, and that's how we get 3 fifths. It's another way of multiplying and getting that simplified answer rather than just multiplying straight across getting our 12 twentieths, and then reducing or simplifying by 4. So we're going to talk about these two options when multiplying fractions in our next slide. All right, so here we've got two copies of the same problem, because we're going to take a look at the two different ways for multiplying fractions. And first we're going to start with 3 sevenths times 2 ninths. And what we've learned so far is that's by multiplying straight across, you get 3 times 2 and over 7 times 9, and that equals 6 over 63. But then you have to think to yourself, well, 6 over 63, can that be simplified? Can both the numerator and the denominator be divided by something, and in this case, the answer is yep, they could both be divided by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 63 divided by 3, that's actually pretty easy because 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 divided by 3 is 1, so the answer is 63 divided by 3 is 21, and then we are now officially done. So the answer is 2 21sts, or 2 over 21. Now, another, the other way that we talked about it is doing that reducing thing before we multiply. Take a look here. Here we multiplied first, got a big old answer, and then we simplified. Well, this other way is, well, let's simplify first. So I'm going to do this in blue. So we've got 3 sevenths times 2 ninths, and that is equal to, and we can do 3 times 2 over 7 times 9, but here's the really cool thing. I can see that 3 and 9 can both be divided by something. So I'm going to do something that Engage New York does not explicitly say, but I'm going to rearrange these 3 times 2 over 9 times 7. So I used the commutative property and I swapped the denominator. So now I have 3 over 9 and I have times and then I have 2 over 7. All right. So 3 over 9, you can think of that as a fraction, 3 ninths. And both 3 and 9 
can be divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now 3 ninths is equal to 1 third. And that's true. I mean, we know that, that 3 ninths is equal to 1 third. So now we have 1 times 2 and 3 times 7. So 1 times, and I'm going to write that over here, 1 times 2 is 2 over 3 times 7 is 21. And so our answer is 2 over 21. So you can see that they both give us the exact same answer. The difference is here we multiplied first, then we simplified. Here we, we waited to multiply until first we simplified, then we multiplied. So the idea is you're going to have to multiply and simplify. You get to choose which you do first. Do you want to multiply first or do you want to simplify first? So now you have some choice. Let's practice, practice that with a word problem. So Musa delivered three-eighths of the newspapers on his route in the first hour, and four-fifths of the rest in the second hour. What fraction of the newspapers did Musa deliver in the second hour? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture. Man, if we're going to have word problems, I'm going to draw a picture in order to help me understand what's going on. So it says, Musa delivered three-eighths of the newspapers on his route in the first hour. So let's draw a picture of three-eighths. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into eighths. And so here is the three-eighths that he delivered in the first hour. So that's the first hour. So what does he have left over? He has left over, he has five-eighths. So the question uh, goes on to say, and then he delivered four-fifths of the rest in the second hour. So we need to figure out four-fifths of five-eighths. Well, that's four-fifths times five-eighths. So we have a choice. Do you want to multiply first, then simplify? Or do you want to simplify first and then multiply? On this problem, it really, I mean, they, it, on any of the problems, you're always going to get the same answer. But I think on this question, I'm going to simplify first and then multiply. So I'm going to, first I'm going to write it out. Well, what would it look like if we multiplied? But now I can see some relationships. I can see that 4 over 8, or 4 and 8, can both be divisible by 4. And 5 and 5 are both divisible by Five. So I see that we could do some simplifying, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange, and I'll leave the 4 times 5 the same, but I'll use the commutative property to, ch to swap out, swap the uh, denominator. Instead of saying 5 times 8, I'm going to say 8 times 5. Now I, it looks like I have a couple of fractions that can be reduced. So 4 over 8. Well, both of those numbers are divisible by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then I can see that 5 over 5, those are both divisible by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And so now I've got, going across, I've got 1 times 1, that's 1. And then I've got 2 times 1, is 2. So the answer is a half. So the question is, what fraction of the newspapers did Musa deliver in the second hour? And the answer is half. All right, so let's recap the big important thing that we're supposed to learn in this video. You have a choice. You can either multiply first or simplify first. So when, it, when you multiply first, let's do it up here, it looks like, okay, well, first you're going to do 3 times 5, then you're going to do 10 times 9, and that equals 15 over 90, and then you have to simplify. So they're both divisible by 5. 
And so that gives you, let's see, 3 over 18. And then 3 and 18 are both divisible by 3. So we can divide that by 3 and this by 3. And so now you get 1 over 6. All right, so that's one way to get the answer. The other way, now that's the multiplying first and then simplify. So first we multiplied, and that's right here. Then we simplified, and that's all, the, all over here. So the other way to do it is we can simplify first, then multiply. So I'm going to take that 3 times 5, and then the 10 times 9, and I'm going to see that, oh, wait a second. I see that there's a relationship between the 3 and the 9. They have a common factor of 3. They're both divisible by 3. I see the 5 and the 10. They have a common factor of 5. So they're both divisible by 5. So I can uh, do that right here. I can do, okay, 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. I mean, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. I can see that the 5 and the 10 are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And now I'm free to multiply straight across, and I get 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 3 is 6, and there's my answer, 1 sixth. So I get the exact same answer. The difference is, up here, I multiplied first, then I simplified. Oops, I want to move that around. Okay, move that around. Then I simplified. But down here, I simplified first, then I multiplied. So it's you got the same two steps. The difference is you get to choose. Do you want to multiply first or do you want to simplify first? And that wraps up Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 15, where we are multiplying non-unit fractions by other non-unit fractions.